Today I'm going to do a book review on, oh man, maybe I can make it brighter, uh, on this book called The Last Hour, oh that's better, The Last Hour, The Last Hour of Gan by R. Lee Smith, and I have read this book, I swear I have. So The Last Hour of Gan is an alien romance. So if you are not interested in an alien romance and you don't want to venture into reading one, it's just not what you're into, you can stop watching now because you wouldn't be interested in this one. I will admit, I didn't start reading alien romances until a couple years ago. One of my good friends suggested I read one, not this book, but a different book. and. I was very hesitant and skeptical and that was one of those things where you read outside of your comfort zone because it's a book that's recommended to you and you actually really enjoy it and I loved, I loved the book she recommended to me. It's a fantastic book called Venomous and I will do a separate review on that book but today I'm doing The Last Hour of Gan and let's get into this. I did do a video a couple days ago about this book and it was over 13 minutes long, so I'm going to try really hard today where it's not so long. In this book, the main female character is Amber, and the main ma male character who is an alien, his name is Murak. And that's how I pronounce it in my head. And Amber, you start out with her, and there are two different point of views throughout the book. So you'll read a couple chapters from Amber's point of view, and then a couple chapters in um, Murak's, Murak's point of view. But you start off the book in Amber's point of view and she is on earth. She's living with her little sister. Their mom just died. Their mom was a prostitute. They didn't have a lot of money. This is futuristic earth where they're very impoverished. They don't have a lot going on for them. They work in the factories. And since their mother died, the landlord's kicking out Amber and her little sister. So Amber goes to an extreme. And she goes to a company on Earth that actually sends out spaceships and a bunch of people to colonize other planets. And they're getting ready to send out people to colonize a new world. And Amber wants to get on this ship with her sister to go start a new life because they will pay you and they'll give you a shot, like an immunization that cures every disease. Like it cures cancer, you can't get sick from like foreign alien bodies, that kind of thing. So it's a very expensive, very rare thing for people of Amber's class to get because of how expensive it is. So Amber goes, she talks to them, they pretty much say she can go and that they don't have a lot of people, especially women, who are going on this expedition or this terraforming of the new planet. But they tell Amber she's too fat. Because she is too big, she can't fit into the cryo chambers to be transported to the new world. So she has to lose weight. If she can lose like 15, 50 pounds within 30 days, they will let her go. So she goes, she finds a drug dealer that her mom used to go to. She gets diet pills from him and injections and drugs and whatnot to lose all this weight. She manages to do it, goes back there in the clear. Amber's little sister doesn't want to go. She, she is a brat. You will grow to hate and despise her little sister because her little sister is spoiled. She whines and cries all a lot and she's a little backstabber. I hated reading about her sister. Her sister is ridiculous and obnoxious. So that's one of the characters you are just going to despise. But Amber still loves her and she will fight for her and she'll try to do what's best for her little sister even though her little sister puts up a fight the whole book, right? Okay, so they get on the ship, they take off, they travel to this new world on their way there or where they're supposed to be going. They hit a, a meteor field it damages their giant spaceship. It goes down on an unknown planet that they weren't supposed to go to. And that's where Amber meets Mirak. Not in that specific time. Amber goes through a lot of separate little ordeals before getting to the point of meeting Mirak. 
And again, I'm simplifying this and kind of shortening up as much as I can because my other video was so long and even at 13 minutes, I was not even halfway through like talking about the first part of the book. So we're going to kind of skip ahead here. Murak, who is the alien, and they, you guess, could be described as lizard men is pretty much the best way I can explain it is they're lizard aliens. But Mirak is a skull, S-K-O-L, and he is pretty much what they consider the right hand of God. He is very worshipped. He is very, like a lot of people look up to him. There's a lot of respect there. What he does is he's spent his whole life being trained, reading from basically their Bible to be, I don't want to say holier than thou, but he is a very strict religious person in their religious standards. So what skulls, 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 skulls do is they go from city to city and if there is a dispute between two people, there will be two scowls, one for each person, that will fight to the death and then whoever wins, that person will be right. So if there's two people fighting over livestock or land, who's ever scowl wins, that person gets all the land or wins whatever they're fighting over. That's just how their world works and their government and laws and whatnot. So he, Murak, is very re revered and he is very good at what he does. He is a badass. He is a killing machine. They go through what happens when they start fighting is they believe that God takes over. And what that means is they kind of hit that criminal primal, they sorry, they hit that primal point where they basically black out and they let their instincts take over and they do not remember what they do. So they can go on like a killing rampage or rape a bunch of people, whatever, but it will happen. And due to that, they have a very strenuous prayer system that is supposed to help them come back down to their normal level when they get too angry. So throughout the book, when he starts getting angry and he feels like he's going to snap and start to like black out or that, that switch is going to flip, he will pray to himself to his God asking for patience. Now they end up needing each other 20, 30% through the book, I, I read it on the Kindle twice. So it's about 20, 30% through the book they meet each other. He goes to where her ship, the big main ship was because the ship crashed and exploded and the light from it could be seen from very, very far off because of the explosion was huge. So he sees it as a sign of his God wanting him to go and see what's over there, like it's his destiny. So he ends up going and and he meets Amber first and they interact. They don't talk the same language, obviously, but she tries to teach him their language and it takes about two weeks and then he's able to understand part of it. And then he starts to take over the rest of the survivors and leading them to where he wants them to go. Now that's only the first 30, 40% of the book. And I hope I'm not giving too many spoilers away but this is another book because it is so big. I feel like I could tell you a lot of what happens in the book and there would still be plenty left for you to discover on your own when you're reading it. So as a warning, there is rape in this book. So if that's like a trigger or like if that's something that you refuse to read about, then I wouldn't do it. The main character does get raped a couple times. By a couple different alien dudes and let's see there is a lot of gore and a lot of battling which doesn't really phase me so I think that's actually leads into a lot of interest in the book but in general I think the book is wonderful it's my top two favorite alien romance novels of all time that I've read so far it is a very long book but it is wonderfully written the characters are really amazing. You will love the main characters, even if you will get frustrated with how Amber is towards her sister or towards her human people who treat her like shit. 
you will still love her as a character. In Murak, you're going to love because he is a badass. And he, even though he's, some things he does is really weird, but you kind of got to remember, like, this is his, part of his religion, and it's a different culture. It's a different planet. He's an alien. Like, he's going to be different than what you would expect. But it is an amazing story. There is a lot going on throughout the story. You will never be bored. I have a hard time if I'm reading a book and if it's not like boom, 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 boom with stuff happening. If I'm not continuously being entertained and interested and wanting to continue reading, I will get bored. So this is a really good book if you like to have stuff going on like constantly. Perfect for you. Anyway, so that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed my review. The Last Hour of Gan by R. Lee Smith. I would highly recommend it. All right. Bye, everyone.